Listening test instructions. The listening test is about 50 minutes. There are six parts in listening test. You will have about six minutes to listen to each passage and answer the questions. The passage will be played once. Hey, you look concerned. What's on your mind? The final exam. I'm not fully prepared yet. Well, don't worry too much. You still have three days. Yeah, but three days will fly past in a wink. Well, you still have time to cram things in your brain anyway. Question 1. Why is the man looked worried? You will hear a conversation in three sections. You will hear each section only once. After each section, you will hear two or three questions. You will hear the questions only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hello, I need to discuss an issue with my recent bill. There seems to be an error in the charges. I'm sorry to hear that. Could you please provide me with your account details so I can look into it for you? Sure. My account number is 7865467890. Thank you. Let me pull up your account. Okay, I see the recent charges here. Could you please specify which part of the bill you believe is incorrect? Yes. It's regarding the internet service charges. I was billed for an upgraded plan that I didn't request or authorize. I understand your concern. Let me investigate this further. It appears there was an error in our, in our system that automatically upgraded your plan. I sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this has caused you. I'll make sure to rectify this right away. Thank you. I also noticed an overcharge for the previous month's service. I see that as well. It seems there was a discrepancy in the billing cycle resulting in the overcharge. Rest assured, I'll correct this too and ensure you're refunded for the excess amount. I appreciate your prompt attention to this matter. What was the reason behind the customer's concern regarding the recent bill? What was the cause of the overcharge for the previous month's service? How did the representative respond to the overcharge concern? You will hear the second section of the conversation shortly. Is there anything else you'd like to address regarding your account or any other concerns you may have? Actually, yes. I've been experiencing intermittent connectivity issues with my internet service lately. It's been quite frustrating, especially since I rely on it for work. I'm sorry to hear about the connectivity issues. The issues. Let me check the system to see if there are any reported outages or technical issues in your area. 
Meanwhile, have you tried troubleshooting your equipment, such as restarting your modem router? Yes, I've tried that a few times, but the problem persists. I understand. Sometimes these issues can be more complex. I'll escalate this matter to our technical team for a thorough investigation. Additionally, I'll note your account to ensure you're compensated for the inconvenience caused by the connectivity problems. Thank you. I appreciate your assistance with this matter. I hope it gets resolved soon. You're welcome. We'll do our best to resolve this as quickly as possible. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? No, that's all for now. Thank you again for your help. It's my pleasure. What was the customer's primary concern regarding the internet service? What should the customer service representative do next to address the customer's connectivity issues? How did the customer attempt to resolve the connectivity issues? You will hear the third section of the conversation shortly. Customer returns to the conversation a few days later. Hello again. I'm calling back about the internet connectivity issue we discussed earlier. It still hasn't been resolved and the problem seems to be getting worse. I'm sorry to hear that the issue persists. Let me pull up your account to review the status of the previous escalation. While I do that, have you noticed any specific patterns or times when the connectivity is particularly poor? Yes, it seems to be especially bad during peak hours in the evening. Thank you for providing that information. It could indicate congestion on our network during those times. I'll make sure to include this detail in the escalation to our technical team. Meanwhile, have you tried any additional troubleshooting steps or tested the connection with any other devices? I've tried connecting with different devices, but the problem persists regardless of what I use. Understood. It sounds like this is indeed a network-related issue rather than a device-specific one. I'll prioritize the escalation and ensure our technical team investigates thoroughly. Additionally, I'll arrange for a technician to visit your premises to conduct further diagnostics if necessary. Thank you for your attention to this matter. I hope we can find a solution soon. Absolutely. Resolving this issue is our top priority. We appreciate your patience and understanding throughout this process. Is there anything else you'd like to add or inquire about? No, that's all for now. I'll await further updates from your team. Thank you again. You're welcome. We'll keep you informed every step of the way. If you have any questions in the meantime, don't hesitate to contact us. Have a great day. You too. Goodbye. Based on the conversation, when does the customer experience the worst connectivity? What conclusion can be drawn about the internet issue from the conversation?
you will hear a conversation followed by five questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hey Mary, what's up? Hey Alice, not much, just thinking about the weekend. Got any plans? Yeah, I was thinking of going hiking. The weather forecast looks great, and I really need some time outdoors. You interested? Hiking sounds amazing. I could definitely use a break from the city. Where were you thinking of going? I was thinking of exploring that trail up in the mountains we talked about last time. It's supposed to have some breathtaking views. That sounds perfect. Count me in. What time are you thinking of heading out? I was thinking early Saturday morning, maybe around 8 a.m. That way we can beat the crowds and make the most of the day. Sounds like a plan to me. I'll make sure to pack some snacks and water. Great idea. I'll do the same. Oh, and don't forget sunscreen and a hat. It's going to be sunny out there. Good call. I'll make a note of that. So, anything else we need to plan? Not really. Just bring your camera if you want to capture some of those scenic views. It's going to be a photo-worthy day for sure. Will do. I can't wait. It's been too long since out in nature. Same here. It'll be nice to disconnect from screens and breathe in some fresh air. Definitely. Thanks for organizing this, Alice. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. No problem, Mary. I'm glad you're coming along. It's always more fun with a friend. Absolutely. All right, I'll see you bright and early on Saturday. Looking forward to it. Have a, have a great rest of your week, Mary. You too, Alice. Take care. What does Mary express excitement about? What does Alice suggest they do to avoid crowds during the hike? How does Alice describe the views on the trail they plan to hike? What did Alice mention about the weather forecast? What does Mary express anticipation for during the hike? You will hear a conversation followed by six questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Smith. Vaccines are one of the most effective tools we have in preventing infectious diseases. They've eradicated smallpox, significantly reduce the incidence of diseases like measles and polio, and continue to save millions of lives every year. Good afternoon, esteemed colleagues and audience. I am Dr. Johnson. 
While vaccines have undoubtedly made significant strides in disease prevention, their efficacy isn't as straightforward as you suggest. Take influenza, for example. The flu vaccine's effectiveness varies from season to season, often hovering around 40-60%, leaving room for considerable doubt. Yes, flu vaccines might not be as effective as we'd like due to the ever-changing nature of the virus, but they still mitigate symptoms, reduce hospitalizations, and prevent deaths. Even at 40-60% efficacy, they make a substantial difference, especially in vulnerable populations. I concede that point. But what about the recent rise in vaccine hesitancy? People are questioning the safety and efficacy of vaccines like never before, leading to outbreaks of diseases we had nearly eradicated, such as measles. It's a testament to the public's mistrust in vaccine efficacy and safety. Vaccine hesitancy is indeed a concern, but it's fueled more by misinformation and fear than by any genuine flaws in vaccine efficacy. The overwhelming scientific consensus supports their safety and effectiveness. Look at the COVID-19 vaccines. They've proven highly, highly efficacious in preventing severe illness and death, turning the tide of the pandemic. COVID-19 vaccines might be a success story, but let's not forget the failures. The rise of vaccine-resistant strains like the Delta variant showcases the limitations of our current vaccination strategies. We need to invest more in research and development to stay ahead of evolving pathogens. Agreed. There's always room for improvement. But let's not lose sight of the tremendous impact vaccines have had and continue to have in preventing infectious diseases. With ongoing research and public education, we can address vaccine hesitancy and further enhance their efficacy in safeguarding public health. Which scientist acknowledges the efficacy of vaccines in preventing infectious diseases? What is the primary concern raised by Dr. Johnson regarding influenza vaccines? What is Dr. Johnson's primary concern regarding vaccine hesitancy? Which scientist argues that vaccine hesitancy is driven by genuine flaws in vaccine efficacy? What worries Dr. Johnson about strains that are resistant to vaccinations? What is Dr. Smith's stance on the impact of COVID-19 vaccines?
you will hear a news item once. It is about 1.5 minutes long. Then five questions will appear. Choose the best way to complete each statement from the drop-down menu. In a revolutionary shift poised to reshape the automotive landscape, electric vehicles are on track to become the dominant mode of transportation on roads worldwide by 2030. With an increasing emphasis on sustainability, coupled with advancements in technology and government policies favoring clean energy, experts predict a monumental EV adoption over the next decade. The trajectory toward electric vehicles' dominance has been steadily building momentum. In recent years, Major automotive manufacturers have made substantial investments in electric vehicles research and development, resulting in the production of more affordable and efficient electric vehicles. Additionally, advancements in battery technology have significantly extended the range of electric vehicles, alleviating concerns about limited driving distances. Government initiatives aimed at reducing carbon emissions and combating climate change have further accelerated the transition to electric mobility. Many countries have implemented ambitious targets to phase out internal combustion engines, offering incentives and subsidies to promote the purchase of electric vehicles. Moreover, stringent emissions regulations are compelling automakers to prioritize the production of electric and hybrid vehicles over traditional gasoline-powered cars. The benefits of widespread electric vehicles adoption extend beyond environmental cons considerations. Electric vehicles offer lower operating costs and reduce dependence on fossil fuels, providing consumers with long-term savings and contributing to energy independence. Furthermore, the integration of smart grid technologies enables electric vehicles to participate in demand response programs, enhancing grid stability and resilience. While challenges such as charging infrastructure development and battery recycling remain, the collective efforts of governments, industries, and consumers are driving the rapid expansion of the electric vehicle market. With the trajectory set for electric vehicles to dominate roads by 2030, the automotive industry stands on the brink of a transformative shift of shift towards sustainable transportation.
You will listen to a two minutes video, then eight questions appear. Choose the best way to answer each question. Well, once kids get back in the routine of burying themselves in those books again, it may take some real work for parents to keep them motivated. We want to share with you an innovative idea that combines healthy snacks and education. Joining us this morning is Dick and Jane of Dick and Jane Educational Snacks. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. This is such an interesting concept, and I've already learned that from one of these little cookies or crackers, you can learn about five things from some of them. This is truly remarkable. Where did you get the idea? Where did this come from? Well, I actually came up with it about uh, four and a half years ago, and we've been uh, sort of uh, ev evolving it as we went. Uh -huh. But it came to me, I was sitting in my office one night, Jane and I have been married 27 years, we have four kids, and it dawned on me that all parents take a handful of Cheerios mm -hmm. and throw them on their child's tray when they're first learning to chew. And then they take them up in preschool to that box of Barnum Animal Crackers with a string on it, here's a giraffe, here's a zebra, here's mm -hmm. a hippopotamus, and start teaching with their food. And I thought, you know what? What happens when they go to kindergarten for the first time? Where was the educational snack there? It didn't exist. And I thought, wow, what if we put education on an animal cracker? And what's interesting about this, too, is that you are a teacher, I and am. so you, you have both languages going on, English mm -hmm. and Spanish. That's right. so, so you came up with these crackers where you can learn language, you can learn about the president, even the states and capitals. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, and we use them in our classroom, teachers do. We get our classrooms ready every year. Um, it's so important to make kids feel comfortable and to be ready to go and to learn. And this is part of the way to make learning fun. It can be fun Are they for healthy? Children. Because that's also very important. We want them to be learning, but also eat a healthy snack. Absolutely. That's hard to find sometimes. They are. Right. Yeah. Well, they're they're 65 percent whole grain. Two grams of fiber, 100 calories per serving, and they're 100% nut-free, which is also a big thing for schools mm -hmm. and for parents mm -hmm. looking. Sure, that's huge. Yeah. Most most schools are nut-free these days. Oh, sure. Nut -free and I'm allergic to nuts, so I understand that. So you you took this very seriously. Oh, this product. For sure. Now let's talk about, for instance, the states and capitals. So you can learn the state. You can learn. Tell me more about what you can learn because you've got abbreviations in there. Mm -hmm. Right. You can learn the name of the state, the shape of the state, a little geography, mm -hmm. spelling, obviously, the abbreviation of the um, state itself, the. Uh, uh, location of the capital city. So you learn about five or six things and we do all 50 um, states and capitals. On the presidents, we do all the presidents plus the White House in, in sequential order so you know which president comes which. And then the bilingual, we do one through ten and then 50 vocabulary words and we're working on about uh, 12 new varieties to come. Well, with two young children myself, I can tell you that the best way for children to learn is when it's fun. That's right. Right. And how neat for them to be able to learn this way and then realize when they go into these classes, they accidentally already know it. I mean, right. that is a That's true right. sense. Well, I'm glad you're here to show us this unique option. Where can they find it? Central Markets in Texas just picked us up and um, so we're hoping to expand out from there but we've been working with schools around Texas for about uh, two years now mm -hmm. uh, right around Houston area Pasadena Santa Fe right. Angleton so it's been good for us well great thank you for being here today well, thank you for having us thank you
you will hear a report once. It is about three minutes long. Then six questions will appear. Choose the best way to answer each question from the drop-down menu. In the 21st century, our understanding of mental health has evolved significantly, yet we find ourselves amidst a profound crisis. The increasing prevalence of mental health disorders, coupled with inadequate support systems and stigma, has created a perfect storm that demands urgent attention. At the heart of this crisis lies a fundamental misunderstanding and underestimation of the complexity of mental health. Unlike physical ailments, mental health issues often remain invisible, leading to dismissal or ignorance of their severity. This lack of acknowledgement perpetuates the cycle of suffering, leaving individuals to navigate their struggles alone, trapped in a cycle of isolation and despair. Furthermore, systemic barriers exacerbate the crisis. Limited access to affordable mental health care, especially in marginalized communities, widens the gap between those in need and those who receive adequate support. Stigma further isolates individuals, discouraging them from seeking help and perpetuating feelings of shame and inadequacy. Addressing the mental health crisis requires a multifaceted approach. Firstly, we must prioritize education and awareness to debunk myths and misconceptions surrounding mental health. By fostering open dialogue and empathy, we can dismantle the barriers that prevent individuals from seeking help. Secondly, we must advocate for comprehensive mental health services that are accessible to all, regardless of socio-economic status. This includes investing in community-based resources, expanding insurance coverage for mental health care, and integrating mental health education into healthcare systems and schools. Lastly, we must confront the societal stigma surrounding mental illness. By promoting acceptance and understanding, we can create a culture that embraces diversity and supports individuals on their journey towards mental wellness. The mental health crisis is not insurmountable, but it requires collective action and commitment. Only by acknowledging the magnitude of the problem and working together can we create a world where mental health is prioritized and all individuals have the support they need to thrive?